Good afternoon, this is your 28storms.com cyclone update for Sunday the 18th of December. The latest tropical cyclone outlooks from the Bureau of Meteorology are still calling for a very low chance of development within the next three days. However, Darwin is mentioning that the monsoon trough could become a little bit more active as we head into the start of next week. Quote, there are no significant tropical lows in the region and none are expected to develop during the next three days. A weak monsoon trough will form over the Arafura Sea over the next few days and is expected to develop further next week. Meanwhile, Brisbane is also getting into the action, and I will quote, There are no significant lows in the region and none are expected to develop over the next three days. However, the monsoon trough is expected to form across the Coral Sea over the next couple of days and develop during next week. As we turn to the latest satellite imagery, both the standard and enhanced infrared show increasing convection over the Timor Sea, Gulf of Carpentaria extending eastward into the Coral Sea, and this entire region will have to be closely monitored for tropical development. The latest water vapor animation shows a well-established trough over the Kimberley Coast extending southeast into interior Australia, and this type of pattern does support upper-level ridging toward the north, so we have favorable upper-level winds in place. Furthermore, the more regional satellite imagery shows the monsoon trough perhaps the best, as you can see, we have increasing convection across much of the South Pacific, extending well into Indonesia. And again, this is a very solid increase compared to what we just saw even a few days ago. And the upper level ridging is quite apparent, especially over the Cape York Peninsula. The good news, of course, is that development is still rather unlikely for the next 48 to 72 hours. We are still not seeing much in the way of significant surface pressure falls, nor is there any sign of a developing closed surface circulation. But as we turn to the latest 72 hour running animation of the precipitable water across the region, there are two distinct areas that we are beginning to focus on. One is that disturbance passing through the Gulf of Carpentaria as it begins to inch a little bit closer to Darwin. And then especially within the last few frames and over the past 6 to 12 hours, there is a second area of cyclonic curvature and vorticity beginning to develop just to the south of the Solomon Sea. Meanwhile, the latest low-level vorticity analysis confirms the overall position of the monsoon trough extending from New Caledonia northwest into the central Coral Sea and eventually westward across the northern tier of Australia. But it's also very apparent that the vorticity is on the rise just to the east of Cairns, Australia, and although the activity isn't quite as concentrated near the northern territory, the chances of development may definitely rise in the five to seven day time frame. The latest sea surface temperature profile shows that much of the Coral Sea is now very favorable for tropical cyclone development. The same can be said for the Gulf region extending westward into the Timor Sea. However, if a storm were to develop in the Coral Sea and begin to head a little bit more toward the south, toward the southern end of the Queensland coast, or points to the south of New Caledonia, then weakening would be rather likely as the 26 degrees Celsius threshold for development does not extend much below 20 degrees south latitude. As we look a little bit more toward the west, the sea surface temperatures are also very favorable just off the Kimberley Coast. So if anything were to develop in this general region and head more toward the southwest, then interest along western Australia should definitely pay attention. And as we discussed on the latest water vapor animation, we do have quite a lot of upper level ridging centered over the Cape York Peninsula. So those are the two main areas just to the east and just to the west where tropical development would be most likely. And here's a look at the latest color representation of the wind shear. We see values generally less than 10 knots across much of the northern coast, with much of the wind shear displaced well toward the south. So with that said, this is the latest look at the GFS forecast at the 200 hectopascal level. And the jet stream is expected to be well toward the southern end of the country. And we see relatively low wind shear values remaining near the monsoon trough throughout the next 7 to 8 days. So then as we take a look at the latest surface streamline forecast, we can see that as we go into 48 and 72 hours, there are no signs of tropical development, but that area of low pressure is beginning to form in the Coral Sea. And as we continue to advance this, toward the end we see near the Timor Sea, as we go into day 5 and day 6, we see the development of a minimal tropical cyclone. It's fairly obvious that this system is beginning to strengthen as it begins to work its way toward the southwest and in the general direction of the Kimberley Coast and possibly western Australia. And as we go into day seven, that lingering low in the Coral Sea is still located to the east of Queensland.
In terms of the overall steering of any potential tropical cyclones, we're going to turn to the 500 HPA streamline analysis. And as we advance this into the 72 hour time frame, you'll notice that there is a fairly significant ridge located over the western Australian coast and that is going to prevent any system that develops near the Timor Sea from moving directly toward the south. Instead, it is more than likely going to parallel the coast as it inches toward the west or southwest. Now, the magnitude of that ridge will be the main factor as to whether or not the storm remains offshore or begins to turn a little bit more toward the inland communities, but that remains to be seen as it looks as though the system is likely to linger away from the coastline and over the open waters through at least the next five to six days. And as we go into day seven, there are still signs that the ridge is present over western Australia, but if that ridge begins to shift a little bit more toward the east, that could allow this developing system to head more toward the south. But again, that is a very extended forecast, and it's just way too early to tell exactly what would happen with any potential cyclone. And of course, the system in the Coral Sea is still lingering offshore, but early indications are that we would still have some westerly winds in the mid-levels that could quite easily keep the system just barely off the coast of Queensland. And the last thing we're going to take a look at today is the latest forecast from the ECMWF. And if you recall in yesterday's video, the European model was not really keying in on any specific development. Rather, it was simply lowering the surface pressures along the monsoon trough. But today's run is a little bit more aggressive as we go into the day seven time frame. We see both of our lingering areas of low pressure, one of course near Darwin, the other one to the southeast of Cairns. And then as we go into day eight and day nine, that system off the coast near the Timor Sea is definitely getting its act together. So we are seeing a bit more in the way of agreement between the GFS and ECMWF. And usually agreement between those two models is a good sign that a tropical cyclone formation is imminent. And as of right now, it's really not heavily strengthening that system in the Coral Sea. But of course, we will still continue to monitor that system. And as a side note, some of the models are beginning to lower the surface pressures once again to the southeast of Sri Lanka as we go into day 10. But as of right now, none of the models are showing anything of significance and definitely not quite a true tropical cyclone just yet. So given the trends in the model data and the satellite imagery over the last 24 hours, it looks as though the chances of development have increased slightly and we do foresee at least one tropical cyclone formation within the next five to ten days. The one near the Timor Sea has the better chance of development, but we're going to closely pay attention to both of the aforementioned systems, and we plan on having a full and completely detailed video regarding the latest on both of these systems by tomorrow evening.